finally, we have tanks. What's up guys, welcome to Tidal Gardens. So Tidal Gardens is a, until recently, a very slowly expanding coral farm located here in Copley, Ohio. And I say slowly expanding until recently because if you're new to this channel, this building has been a, at least a two year work in progress. We originally started with the greenhouse system and then now we've gone to a fully fleshed out coral farm here. The really big news is that we have now all the aquariums that we ordered from Reef Savvy. Reef Savvy is an aquarium manufacturer down in Florida, they have a stellar reputation, and it took a hot minute to get these tanks. Let's not even get that twisted. But this past week, uh, Rico's Aquariums and Frost Corals, two local guys here, volunteered to help come down all the way to Florida with me and drive back. That was quite an odyssey. We flew down uh, from, with Frontier Airlines, which if you guys travel a lot, Frontier is not my first choice, but they were the only flight that could get us there nonstop and have us land in the morning. We rented two trucks. Uh, Felix from Reef Savvy loaded them up the day before and we just hit the road. And the, the game plan was to drive through the night all the way from Florida back up to Northeast Ohio. We made it back up here at about 6.30 a.m. the next day. That trip was about as hardcore as I've ever done as far as a road trip goes. There was all kinds of really scary moments. At one point, there was almost a car accident and one of the trucks had to slam on the brakes and all the tanks shifted forward and slammed into the front cab of the, tr of the truck. And then the really big tank slammed into those two tanks. Luckily, there was almost no damage. There was this one inch little sliver of damage, it, but we basically hit these things with the truck. I've got to give a lot of credit to Reef Savvy because they built these things like literal and figurative tanks. They took a, a huge beating. Like these, these trucks that we were driving shook violently for the entire 16, 17 hour drive. The truck that Rico and I were in, from about 35 miles an hour to 55 miles an hour, was just like, had this natural shake to it, regardless of what the road is doing, okay? But then you'd run into certain highways and then that would introduce like a huge rumble shake to the truck also. And Frost was saying, it's like, yeah, it feels like I've been operating a machine gun for the past hour and a half. Like that's how much this stuff was violently shaking. Also, I am good on mountains for a really long time. I understand that like, it's not the Rocky Mountains, it's just like the little lazy Appalachian Mountains. But when you're driving tons of fragile, fragile glass aquariums, the last thing you want to deal with are these West Virginia mountains at night, hoping a deer doesn't run in front of you with these slopes and hills that these trucks can't stop. I mean, when you hit the brakes on these trucks, it's merely a suggestion. So yeah, it was a huge odyssey. But they're finally here. And once we got them here, the, the stuff that was previously a concern for me was getting them off of the trucks and onto the stands. No, I did not care. Like the biggest, most stressful part was already done. And now the plumber who, uh, who I have a ton of faith in, he had devised a plan to get them from the, from the trucks onto these stands using like a, kind of like a suction cup hoist system. It worked like a charm. Everything went super smoothly, and he was able to move all six ginormous aquariums all in one afternoon. It was fantastic. So I've got all kinds of other updates. Let's take a look first at these tanks. The first of these huge tanks I want to show you is this Peninsula. And if you recall in earlier videos, 
I mentioned that this is a huge open space and we had to install these uh, kind of these pergola type structures to hang the lights down. We haven't obviously haven't installed the lights just yet, but there's going to be a total of maybe a dozen radions coming down from this and all the electronics are going to be hidden inside these beams. So all you're really going to see is a single cable management system come down and it'll feed all these lights here. This tank is 48 inches wide, 126 inches long, and 24 inches top to bottom. Now, when you do the measurements for that, that comes out to be like almost 700 gallons, but in reality, the, the water volume in here is not that close. Because when you're getting a custom tank made, this distance here that is 24 inches, it doesn't really account for the thickness of glass once you're designing tanks of this size. So we have a three quarter inch Euro brace up top, three quarter inch glass base down below, plus there's an ABS uh, structural layer that was kind of a, an add-on, but that is also I think maybe a quarter inch thick as well. So you're losing quite a lot of, uh, of water volume to just the material construction of this tank. And that over the, the footprint of 126 by 48 turns out to be quite a lot of volume. But it's fine because I think if it was just a couple inches taller, visually it might look nicer. But there's like a fine line between having a tank that is kind of difficult to work in maintenance wise to being an absolute nightmare maintenance wise, it's only a couple of inches different. So we are already going to have to use some kind of step stool thing just to get into this tank. But if you're starting to add depth, that's really longer than your arms can realistically reach into there. Because remember, it's 48 inches across suddenly it just becomes a total nightmare to get in and around to do any work in this tank. So yeah, I, I, I concede that a little bit more height might be better visually, but long term I don't want it to be a total nightmare to the point that it doesn't matter how visually impressive that a couple of inch, inches would have gotten you if the stuff that's going on in the tank doesn't look that great because you, you can't really get in there that easily. Continuing on, we've picked up these four frag tanks. And they are pretty much identical to the original four that we have currently running. Uh, again, I'm just super happy that they're here. It'll take a little while for us to fully plumb this in because we don't have our sump built yet for this. But it takes uh, a good long time to do all of the plumbing associated with these guys. If you remember in the past video, we talked about the type of uh, closed loop plumbing and return plumbing that we've designed for these things. But yeah, I, I couldn't be happier with the fact that they're just here. And within no time, I'm sure they will all be up and running and yeah, good times. The last really big deal tank that we've got is this show tank. It differs from the previous show tank in that it's not a peninsula in the sense that both long faces are not viewable panels, but most peninsulas also aren't four feet wide. This tank is an absolute monster. It is the same size as the peninsula, but because the lighting is on in this aquarium, it, it seems so much bigger. So I'm guessing that once we have our lighting installed on the peninsula system, it'll look every bit as large and imposing as this one does. But I'm super excited about getting in here and doing some aquascapes because to be honest, up till this point, I haven't thought about it, not for one second, how I'm gonna aquascape this. This one is going to be primarily an SPS dominant system. And the other tank is gonna be more of a mixed reef. Now, this system not only differs in the fact that it is a back against the wall type tank, but in the number of closed loops. So over there, we're only gonna be running two closed loops and that's why I've kind of wanted to get a little bit more powerful pumps to, to operate those closed loops. And those closed loops are also 
uh, going to be in the bottom of the tank, kind of like they are for the frag systems. Now, this system here has, you can see the, the four holes there. Those are the intakes for four different closed loops. And the return lines for those closed loops are going to come in through the Euro brace in the back. So there's an inch and a half suction side intake and then a one inch return that's going to be going through the, through the Euro brace. One thing about this whole plumbing system, there's going to be a total of five aquariums that are going to be plumbed into this. So it's going to be the four existing frag tanks that I've got here, plus this show tank. Now the cool detail, plumbing-wise, that I like is that this show tank here, the filtration is not going to be just down here where most, most systems of this size would just have the sump right underneath the stand, right? No, that's not how we do things here. We're, we're completely crazy. So the filtration for this tank is all the way over here. This is the central area of the building where all the maintenance is going to get done. So there's going to be a total of four sumps just like this. If you need to work on a skimmer, work on a reactor, work on anything, it's going to be all centralized to this region. So you won't have to run, take buckets all the way over to that tank or anything like that. All filtration related maintenance is going to get done right here in close proximity to the work sinks and everything like that. This time around for these frag tanks, we drilled these holes differently. In the previous tanks, what we did was we used a hole saw. That hole saw really fights you like crazy, so we didn't want to go down that route again. Instead, what the, what the plumber did was get a plunger router, and that easily cut down the time by it was probably four times faster if I had to guess. And all these holes are nice, nice and large, they're easy to get to. And the whole process went much, much quicker to get those holes in place. And to avoid confusion, I'm talking about drilling the, the stand material, not the tank. The tank came drilled, but, uh, in, but we needed to, to drill out both uh, the squish layer of polycarbonate and the type one PVC structural layer to accommodate the bulkhead assembly there. What is crazy though, is the sheer amount of material that gets all over the place when they start drilling this out. I would have to guess that there might be two 30 gallon trash bags full of shavings that I had to sweep up and then later vacuum up and then later mop up afterwards. It probably took me about a good day and a half to clean up after just this install event. The next thing that I want to talk about you guys is the wire management that's going on in these systems. So if you look at these two return pumps, you can just see a little bit of their power cabling, but after that, it's going to be a pretty tough task to even see where all the wire hides. And that's because one of our customers saw my past video where I was talking about cable management and pointed me to a really slick product. So a quick shout out to my customer Gina for introducing me to this guy here. This allows for a zip tie to be slid through there and this little uh, T connection goes right into the aluminum T-slot of the stand. So let me show you that real quick. So this guy here can slide in and twist. See that? And a lot of these guys are much tighter than this one is, so it's e sometimes it's even a struggle to get them to twist in there. And from that, you can feed this through and zip tie all your cabling right to that. And what's nice about uh, this sort of assembly is that it's that much easier also if you ever need to get to these cabling and everything like that, you just undo it. It's a quick disconnect. So I want to quickly go over just how crazy our cable management is here. So if you look right down here is one of the closed loop pumps 
for this frag system. Now where might this guy be plugged into? So in order to do that, there's some hidden wire management stuff that goes on there. But you would have to go all the way over, over here, against this wall. See that little white trim that's on the vertical wall there? That's not trim, that's cable management. All the way up to the ceiling, again, trim and cable management to cut over and then plug into the ceiling. So this is a 50 foot extension cord, just so that there's no extension cords hanging down over the tank or anything like that. Everything is like really seamlessly integrated. So yeah, very well hidden. There, J channel over, J channel across, J channel down, over with the plumbing, all the way to here. Yes, we're nuts. All right guys, that pretty much does it from here. Hope you guys enjoyed the update. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Happy reefing.